Kent E. Nielsen here, and I am delighted to have you with me. Christ came into the world to do the will of his Father, and he prepared a way for you to do likewise. Join me to put him first in your life, receive the fruits of godliness, and realize your divine mission to be like him. You were born and commanded to do greater works than he did. Now let's go to work. Hello and welcome to Jesus is the Mark. I'm grateful to have you here today. My name is Kent. I'll be your host today. Uh, I'm just thrilled with life right now. I've been super, super blessed and I'm grateful to have you here because we're going to talk about something. We're going to talk about the domino cause and effect syndrome is what I've coined it. I don't know. Maybe someone else has said that before. But as I was reading from a book today with my wife, or it's actually with my family this evening for our family reading time. Uh, the book's called The uh, Willpower Doesn't Work by Benjamin Hardy, a PhD. And he, at the very beginning of the book, and he's just teaching a principle about an environment that I had not crossed my mind. And I'm grateful for what I have read thus far and super jazzed up to to read more. Um, so uh, I'm going to start off just for a heads up. I'm going to be sharing a, a brief quote from his book that I've read. And then I'm also going to be sharing a quote from President Ezra Taft Benson from 1985 in an address called Born of God. And essentially, the, as a, a recap, if you will, not a recap, but a beginning cap of uh, what we're covering today is how important our environment is. What is your environment like? And um, furthermore, I, I'd like to give an update of, of how this podcast is moving forward. In the past, I've been reading a post that I have written in the morning, but I found that you miss out on my personality a little bit. You hear my reading voice, um, as my writing voice, I should say, rather than my speaking voice. And so thank you for giving me a shot at this and uh, the privilege of, of being part of this podcast. So without further ado, we'll start off with a quote by President Benson. This sets the stage. Uh, first, he says, the Lord works from the inside out. The world works from the outside in. The world would take people out of the slums. Christ takes the slums out of people. And they take care, take themselves out of the slums. The world would mold men by changing their environment. Christ changes men who then change their environment. The world would shape human behavior, but Christ can change human behavior. So let's let's unpack this a little bit. So in, essentially, what he's saying is, like, if say you're a foster parent and you, the, the, he's suggesting that the world says, if you want a child to change, put him in a new home with caring and loving parents, and then he'll change. Change his environment, and then he will change. Um, it reminds me of a quote from President Packer of, of the 12, um, who said that if you, if to make significant change, I'm paraphrasing, to make significant change, you do that by the study of doctrine rather than the study of behavior. And so what President Benson is getting at here is that if you want to change someone, you need to change their heart. And it's not that you have the power to do that. You can simply entice and invite them to change. And they have to make that choice themselves to make that change. But when they do make that change and they do come unto Christ, that is when doors open. And that's when he empowers them with his own gifts. Um, meaning that when you allow God to reign within your own heart and mind, that it permeates from, from within to the outer and as your inner core changes, your outer core changes likewise. And yet from a different angle that I had never thought of before like this is from uh, Benjamin Hardy, uh, I should say Dr. Benjamin Hardy, there is this notion of changing our environment has an effect on our, so consciously making that change, consciously saying, okay, this is the kind of person I wanna be, so who am I gonna hang out with? Who am I going to spend time with and associate with people that are like where you want to be? This is just a small example that he he references. So um, uh, without further ado, I'm going to read a quote from him. And then we'll come back to this born of God address. 
where he quotes another prophet, President McKay, who quotes an author named Beverly Nichols in a book called In Stepping Stones to an Abundant Life. It was published in 1971. So without further ado, let's dive into the quote from Benjamin Hardy. The internal and external play off each other. When you change your when you change your environment, such as surrounding yourself with different people, your thoughts and emotions change. These inner changes then alter your values and aspirations, which requires you to further alter your external environment. Thus, it is by tweaking your conditions that you proactively shape who you become. So I'm gonna reread that. Um, that was just kind of the copy. I'm gonna reread it from the notes that I took in the book and make a little more emphasis here. So it's halfway through a paragraph where he starts, I, I cut off the first half of the paragraph and it's it basically he says, the internal and external play off each other. When you change your environment, so you're, so I'm adding here, when you, when you physically change your environment, such as surrounding yourself with different people, he continues, your thoughts and emotions change. So before you change your environment, so to speak, you need to have a change of heart, so to speak. That's one of the messages that President Benson is suggesting is that the world it wants to change someone by just changing their environment. But if you are the person and you've turned your life over to Christ, you then choose to change your environment to be in accord with what your inner vessel is. And then when you make that change, then you have a cause and an effect scenario going on. So the cause is coming unto Christ. The effect is it cleanses your inner vessel, which is another cause that has the effect of cleansing your outer vessel which has another cause of being a witness of Christ to everyone that you know. And just by, I was at St. Francis of Assisi put it this way, preach the gospel your whole life and when necessary, use words. So essentially, when you, when you change your core, it changes your outer and, that, and then you're going to bear forth fruits and people are going to meet you and they'll know him by knowing you. Not because you have a name badge per se, but because you are, you have a smile, you are genuine, you are for real, you are kind, loving, you have the characteristics of Christ, you invite and entice people to live a better life. So I just, I love this idea of a domino cause and effect syndrome that when you, when you have a cause for Christ, it has it bears fruit in your life. And when you put that fruit, the seed from that fruit into your life, it's going to bear more fruits. And then when it's in that cause, it leads to another effect, which is line upon line, um, precept upon precept, perfection upon perfection. So you, so it's not what some people call human perfection, hitting a no hitter, for instance, in a baseball game. But we're talking about perfection of living according to the light and truth that you have access to so that you can then receive more of that light and truth. And you continue to grow line upon line, revelation upon revelation until you understand all things and you comprehend all things. Um, oh, it's just, it's just so exhilarating. So uh, in, in conclusion, I I'd like to read from that quote that uh, President McKay read, which President Benson read of President McKay, and it says the following, and this again is quoting Beverly Nichols. You can change human nature. No man who has felt in him the spirit of Christ, even for half a minute, can deny this truth. You do change human nature, your own human nature, if you surrender it to Christ. Human nature can be changed here and now. Human nature has been changed in the past. Human nature must be changed on an enormous scale in the future and only Christ 
can change it. Um, I, 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 that's, that's really powerful, and it goes really along well with the message of this of making Jesus the mark in our lives. As we put Him first in our lives and make those adjustments, it's going to rock our core, because our core is made essentially of often is the traditions, the false traditions of our forefathers, um, a, a lot of n negative energy and a lot of things. And I'm not pointing fingers and saying someone's bad or, or not are not good or whatever, however you want to phrase it. What I'm simply saying is that when you turn your Christ, your life over to Christ, it allows your inner workings of your soul to alter. And when you yield to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and put off this natural flesh, this this these natural inclinations to be the opposite of Christ, which is the enemy of God, even the natural man, then you change and it changes from the inside out. It's an inside job. And as you make those changes, the world changes because you've changed. And I love this. It reminds me of a quote from Sterling W. Seal in his first volume of a book called Le Leadership. I believe it's page 14, but it, he said essentially that when you live the law of the boomerang, aka the golden rule, if everyone lived the golden rule, the world would change in 30 days. In conclusion of this domino cause and effect syndrome podcast episode, um, I'm grateful to have you here, and I invite you to allow, come unto Christ and let that domino cause of coming unto him change your life forevermore. Let that have an effect and bear forth the fruits of Christ in your life. And finally, I, I, I've got to put a final note too. Uh, this evening, I, I spent some time with my neighbors who are helping me to put together a, a roll in a row roll intro for my podcast in the future, and an exit intro. I'm super excited to see what they come up with, and I'm grateful to have great neighbors. And um, let let your light shine. Discover discover your talents, develop them, and share them or disseminate them. Allow this exchange of talents to take place not only in your life but in the lives of those you touch so that together as you work together and collaborate you can have an impact on other people's lives again going along with this theme of domino cause and effect uh, i love that james allen brought this up in one of his books he he, he says that as you start raising your your lives above the fog of of the world and climbing the mountain so to speak then you're going to meet people that are going to be to help take you to the next level. And I, my neighbors are a classic example of this. And I've waited for months and years to, to find someone after reading that material. And here's an, uh, just this past week, I've met two of those individuals. And it's just a further witness there that when you have this domino cause and effect syndrome, when you, when you put Christ first, that is that cause, it has an effect. It bears forth fruits, really good, tasty fruits. And it changes not only your life, but those within your circle of influence, which increases your circle of influence and enables us to become a one people of Zion, one of, of one heart and one mind uh, with no poor among us. Grateful to have you here tonight. Um, thank you for being part of the podcast thus far and um, hope you have a beautiful day. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for joining me for a brief mental workout. Wise men do their mightiest works with their mental exertions. I encourage you to take time to ponder on the weightier matters of life and to govern your body with pure mental exertions, rather than having your body tell you what to do. You are welcome to connect with me further at my link in bio, where you can access my book, my social handles, my latest creative updates, and even request coaching services via email. I have been given much and am here to serve. Thank you, and God bless you to be fruitful in doing your mightiest works. Good day.